We have Decroft versus Wesley. Decroft is in the Seahawks. He's on offense now. Uh, I've known Decroft for also forever, just like Fancy that we did the uh, video of him the other day. Um, I've played Madden with Decroft forever. I watched some of this game live, and I'll be honest, you guys, you're going to see some crazy meat riding in this video. I'm just going to be straight up with you guys. Uh, the way Decroft plays this game is how I love Madden to be played. I really hate how the current meta is. Um, and when I'm talking about offense, I hate how the current meta is, and I think Decroft plays the game in a way that I really respect. I really wish was the current meta uh, like it's been in years past. He's in U-Trips out of the Patriots playbook. And uh, we're gonna, yeah, we're gonna see him mostly sit, sit in U trips right here, gun wild trips. Um, it's not gonna be much like all, he's not gonna audible really ever, um, which I love. I really hate the audible me the audibling around meta, and he's gonna be beating a lot of man coverage. Wesley's on defense, running man coverage, running the three three loop blitz basically. He's Wesley's not moving this guy out, but rather shifting his backers one way or the other. Uh, so this, instead of having to mainly move this guy down, he is just shifting his linebackers. Uh, which is a lot of people move people down, so it's a little bit different. And so we're going to see. Uh, immediately, though, what we're going to see here is on second and six for Decroft, Wesley's going to get a sack. What happens right here? Does he get bull rushed? Is this a... Oh, yeah. I mean, geez, this guy this guy just bull rushes right through the middle or th throws the center to the side, I guess. Aaron Donald, geez. That's frustrating if you're Decroft. Uh, let's see. Okay, third and 12. What's the play call here? I didn't love the, I guess running on first down wasn't the worst thing ever. It was what it was. But then a sack on second down leads to a scary third down. And if you don't get a completion here, it's like, do you go for it on fourth and 12 on your first drive? We have threat detector and we're going to see, all right, this guy's no longer coming. Uh, but this loop blitz, this guy's probably in a contain. So he won't be showing up on that threat detector on third or fourth downs. Uh, this guy is coming though. You can see, unless it's the bluff blitz, which is unlikely. And yeah, so it's a contain. You're going to get decent pressure. Got to throw that corner route to Cheetah, though. What happens right here? Is this Cheetah Cooks? Just one-on-one. -on -one. He's going to put this slot guy, this ISO receiver. So the ISO receiver in Gun Bunch is a flanker. He's out wide, so he gets those outside route cams, like the C route, the, the, the Poco, uh, the deep post. In U-Trips, though, the ISO wide receiver on this right side, which is right behind my face cam. Now, let's see if he zooms out for a second. So... It's right here, this guy. He is an slot wide receiver. So he gets post, corner, all the slot things. And Decrow's going to really utilize the corner route from this guy. And he's running this wide trap. It's called a 56 trap. Um, you see a lot of 01 traps. And this is going to be trapping or attempting to trap the, out, the per, uh, first person outside of the tackle. Uh, it's a little bit wider hitting trap. Uh, this is good against some of the more... This is really nice against, like, if they're pinching 3 through 5 wide, like, running, like, a bear front. Like, if they're doing something like guy here, guy there, guy here, guy here, guy here. This guy is supposed to get trapped right here, meaning that he comes free, this guard comes over, and kicks him out. I don't know if the game's going to block it correctly like that, um, but that's ideally what you would see... Um, from a 56 or a wide trap like that. If you want to know my framework for how I run my offenses and defenses and how I've won pro man tournaments while becoming a top-ranked player, join my website, civil.gg. My guides will give you the tools you need to win more games of Madden, regardless if you're trying to become comp or if you're just trying to win more games online head-to-head. -head. The link is in the description. Let's see what Decroft's calling right here. Yeah, so pretty much always this loop blitz is coming off the halfback side too, uh, which is intentional from Wesley. I wonder why he has it like that, but it, I'm sure it is intentional. And then the play scat is going to, this is from the play call scat. And this, so, this ISO is pretty much always going to be on a p hot routed post or a hot routed corner route. And then with the play scat, you have Christian Kirk in the slot on the trip side on a corner route. Uh, he puts Kittle on a streak, and then you're going to see a motion slant here, actually. So you have double double man-beating routes of slant and then post, and then this corner route can win as well. Steps up in the pocket. You're going to see Decroft have pretty good pocket presence, never really back up too far. Right there, though, he does walk into a sack a little bit, and Wesley's getting pretty good sheds in the interior early. Right there, though, was a really good example of, of Decroft stepping up too far and kind of walking into that sack. Uh, there is give and take when you have good or when you have, you know, when you intentionally walk up in the pocket, you'll avoid a lot of the loop blitzes and you'll avoid a lot of big sacks. But you can walk into some as well as we get a timeout right there. Uh, I believe Decroft's rocking a ton of abilities. Yeah, we saw uh, Joe Thomas's threat detector and uh, was that Edge Pro? I think it was. I might be wrong there. 
He's got a lot of abilities just all around. And you're going to see, again, Cheetah this time, hot-routed corner route. And when he's one-on-one, -on -one, I mean, he's probably a short in, short out on uh, Tyree Kill right here. So he's going to cook his man coverage more often than not. You're probably going to have to see Wesley get some safety help somehow with a cloud flat over there one way or another. And, yeah, this is pretty – geez, another timeout. Oh, my goodness. Golly, GG. All right. Let's see. Now we actually are going. And now we're going to see instead of – oh, yep, corner out. Yep. And we're going to see the same motion. Uh, a lot of these guys who run offense like this really this year isn't many or really isn't anybody. Um, you're going to see like D-Cross creating very similar looks, the same motion all the way across and the same slant from this guy. But instead, now Cheetah last play was on that post route we saw. Um, now, the same look, boom, breaks out, right? And then same, same route concept on this side. Uh, a huge, huge fan of it. Huge fan of it. Almost the exact same play. Minor difference. And that time he's able to hit that slant coming underneath. Had the first down to the corner route, but, I mean, he's looking low, high for the most part. Sees the open route. Doesn't take it for, doesn't try to get greedy, um, which is a great overall rule. Just that time, he does come up a little short. So now it's fourth and one. And looks like he's actually going to run the ball. Let's see what this trap does. So this trap actually, ideally... So the game has the tight end blocking this end. So this guy isn't... Ideally, you have this tight end releasing upfield. Going, you know, just downfield or attacking like a safety over here. So then this guy gets kicked out. But instead, he has a tight end on one one Guard's going to end up playing it more like a power, actually, is what it ends up blocking as. Um, and he's able to pick up the first down. Yeah, really, though, if this blocked correctly, this wide trap would be really... I mean, this would be really good. Literally, release here... Just block, run them off, block, block. Uh, you have uh, double team chip backside. He goes, attacks him. And you have this guy pulling right here to kick this guy out. This guy releases downfield or hinges. And then you have your halfback take it right up. But the game doesn't block it correctly always. So you're going to see more. You're going to have this tight end get a one on one with the end. And a lot of times that end's going to get sheds or you know something like that and it's gonna blow up the run see look same motion from this outside flanker across this time doesn't go all the way out like he had been earlier um but he's able to hit this tight end now um and basically just kind of inverting rules look uh previous play we had streak from tight end corner out from slot right now we have streak from slot corner out tight end Boom, just changing assignments a little bit. Right, This right side, though, he just goes street corner. I don't love this combo, honestly. This takes a long time to develop. These motion corner routes just take forever. So I really, I don't like that on that ISO side. I like the, if you're going to motion snap anything in this game, it should probably be like a motion slant, unless you're motioning a flat out or something. Uh, just because they, they take so long to actually get next, uh, they like to actually get into the route after the motion. You just don't have that much time in this game. Um, quick run right here. Let's see. And yeah, e even with that, like you're going to see examples of opportunities for him to break kind of big runs against this defense. Uh, you see big holes, but they're just getting shedded. Well, I mean, I, I really can't stop thinking about, <laughs> I hate running in Madden. Dude. Uh, you guys know I really, really do. But if this thing could just block correctly, dude, look at this. Boom, double team, right? This guy then get works next level. Go down, block. This guy releases here, run off. And then all this guard has to do is kick out this dude, bro. I love my favorite run ever, dude, is a trap, dude. I get such peaked in high school vibes from it because that's um, I used to play guard in high school and we ran a ton of trap. My God, my goodness, man. My freaking goodness. Same idea, though. Look, same same route combo. And the thing is, Wesley's running a pretty much a pretty similar defense over and over, bro. A lot of man coverage, switching up the zones very, very moderately. So you don't need a bunch of man beating plays like when someone's running, you don't need that many man beating plays. You need a master, literally, to beat most man coverage users, you need a master two or three man beating plays. Because when you're in man coverage, and if everybody's manned up, you have five eligible wide receivers, right? If they're sending a pass rush of four, which is a pretty much a, almost everyone sends at least four in this game, that's five people manned up, four people on you. That's only two, or that, that's really only two other people who could be playing other things, a zone and a user. And so there's not that many adjustments they can really do. You know what I mean? Right there, he got shot from the backside. Um, Ted Hendricks, that was a pretty good gap shoot, actually, from the CPU. Just totally coming free right here. Yeah, just totally, boom, right down that lane. Nice. Good gap shoot. You know what? That's actually a result of um, looking back at it again 
is that this guy's blitzing this time. For the most part, uh, Wesley's been zoning this guy out. But because he's blitzing, he's going to come down hard, not giving time for anybody over here to work backside to him. And then he's going to be able to shoot this gap perfectly. Huh. That's actually because Decroft... I, I think it's because Decroft actually quick snapped instead of waiting. Um, and Wesley was going to zone or man him up. A second 11, though, nonetheless. And now we're going to see actually kind of a different route combo here. C route. We have uh, drag, post... Yeah, slightly different route combo. We have not seen this, and he's going to attack over the middle. And you can see, man, this is one of the things with this game, bro, that really was not a thing in previous years where you would see a lot of people's users be pretty on point. I will say, I'm guessing Wesley thought this was like streak corner route, so he kind of overplays it. But when he does, you see he can't get back to this post. He can't. And it's a good play call from, uh, from Decroft. But really, it's Wesley's user that leaves that open. That play easily could have been bagged. He just overplays with the user. And in this game, bro, the user is so, the user is so irrelevant in this game, which I really, really hate um, because you're just guessing. Like, you don't like, get time to react to anything. It's really just a straight-up guess. Decroft in trips tight end. We have the stock short corner right here. Let's see if that's what he's going to. No, he's going to go high ball backside. It's actually trip side. What happened right here? This is a fade stock fade route. I'm not sure if that's in the... No, it's not in the play. He just... It looked like just a hard flat. Good good read. I wonder if... I wonder if that, any chance that was a... a that's a glitch in the red zone or something. He made that read so fast. Because it looks like man right here. Right above my face cam. But this guy doesn't play anything. This guy, Huh. I wonder if that's a glitch or he just really recognized a hard flat immediately. And he was going to, if it wasn't there, he was just going to throw it away. Oh, Wesley's made 404K playing this thing. Jeez. It's a good amount of chunk of change. Wesley's going to be in a lot of gun bunch and then audibly a tight slots hat back week. Very meta. We've seen it have a lot of formation or a lot of uh, players doing it. Henry does it a lot. He's more likely than not in Colts playbook. It, it's probably what it is. I can find out later. Um, but yeah, and it, you see immediately he's running basically, basically a very basic mesh concept. This route combo is good every year. Um, the halfback, you can kind of, you don't, if you take him out right for a second, streak, slant, post, you see this route combo every year from numerous formations. We've talked about this all year long in these comp games. This time he just has the running back on a wheel, could have him on a bunch of different stuff. Uh, and it's just a, was he throwing that? Okay. Um, yeah, I mean, you can do a bunch of different things with that. And, and it'll, it'll pretty much always be good. Zones have troubles reacting to it. They, they let the slant or the post get right in front of them, right behind them. And the user has to pick and choose. And a lot of times, if you're playing bad users, they get caught in no man's land. Watch what, uh, ooh, we're going to watch what D Cross doing on defense a little bit more. Uh, Wesley with a really good click on. This is, he didn't need to here, but look what Wesley does here. Uh, uh, watch Herman Moore and watch how Herman Moore comes back to this ball. He cuts it. He attacks it. It's, it's like a rebound. Literally, that's like one of the basic rules of rebounding, right? Ball's in the air. Go attack the ball at the highest point. Don't let the ball come to you. And that's what he's doing here. And basically, if this would have been closer man coverage, he's look where this ball is supposed to get caught at, right? I mean, this is a, what, a five-yard difference, give or take. Um, I, you're going to cut, you cut that ball off. You're going to eliminate a lot of the chances for that ball to get picked off and undercut by a DB. Really good user click on from Wesley. And we're going to see that. I remember noticing that the other night when I watched this, he going to, he's going to do that a lot with a lot of these throws. Milkman at D tackle. Got to watch out for him coming right up the middle and quick throw. See a lot of these concepts go to so many different formations, man. Um, he's in tight slots right now, but we see bunch trail has these Texas routes right here from the tight end. And he just uh, hot routes one on to Kittle. And literally, if user bails, throw throw the Texas, right? User bails left, throw the Texas. Snap throw it, right? I mean, literally, like, as soon as it breaks, it's not necessarily a snap throw, snap throw, but it's very close to a snap throw. And it's just simple, man. Um, and and that's they, they make the games really easy for themselves. It's really like a, a very basic if-then statement right there for, for Wesley on that read. It's, if user bails, throw in the, throw in the trail. Simple. Right here, something else I noticed last night, is, and this this makes me so happy to see. I've not seen this all year, and man, I love these things. Halfback option routes, man. This is a choice route, um, choice route option route where the uh, if halfback reads man coverage on him, he's gonna cut outside and run like a basically a kind of a deeper out compared to what a normal halfback out would be. And if it's man, he's gonna sit uh, as a curl route. These haven't been good for most of the year, but. Um, Wesley shows that they're pretty good right now. 
And then you see basic slant post combo. D cross, a lot of defense gonna have a lot of issues with this. Streak pulling deep zones out. And look at this. Like, so the user plays it right, but this is open one on one against a man. User has to play this, and then we have post slant. Slant's gonna get a step. And you see, even right there, dude. Very, very small. But you can see D Croft has KOs all over the field, right? D Croft has KOs all over the field. Watch where this ball is getting thrown. Watch where he catches it. Just barely underneath that, getting away from the DB. This is a click on catch, getting away from the DB, and then look how he swerves oh, trying to get away from him. He's trying to avoid that contact because the KOs come from tackle animations after the ball it hit, touches your receiver's hands. So he's avoiding that. Wesley's very good at it. Um, he plays the game a ton. Um, also, a cool guy. I went out. I, he lives a little north north of me here in Austin, Texas. Um, fun, fun, fine guy. Fun and fine guy to hang out with as well. Um, so props to you, Wesley. Uh, run right there. A little two yard gain. Nothing, nothing too special with it. Mike Haynes gets moved in, and then D Decroft's doing weird things with his user. Look what Decroft's like. He's like putting his user out here. I. I have to assume, I, this is a guess, um, but he's done it a few times. I, he's not doing anything on the snap here, um, like in pass coverage. So what I wonder is if this is meant to be a gap shoot right here, which it could be. So like if this is inside zone, right? Let's say this is inside zone. He, this guard does not see his user. This tackle is probably going to kick out this end. So guard goes downhill and goes here. User shoots through here. That's my suspicion of why he's doing that. I don't actually know. Because um, you see, he's not really doing anything like... There's no reason to do that there uh, in pass coverage, it appears. Unless there's something with like a blitz that he might do later. Or like a user blitz, maybe. But that shouldn't be happening here. Watch the option route, though. Has not been good all year. But, I mean, they're getting open, right? Th this is open. That throws odd. But that's open right there. And you see, it looks like Decroft sending the dogs right here. Both double edge. Decroft knows that he has threat detect uh, that uh, Wesley will be able to see it. Wesley blocking the tight end to pick up the slot corner and then probably sliding his line here. If I have to assume, we're going to see tackle, kick out to slot, boom, boom. He'll sit, or he'll, he'll probably sit and double team, boom, boom. We'll see if that ends up happening. No, we have edge pressure, throws it, and Troll Davis able to catch it on the option, bro. So the play before, Wesley gets screwed on the option, getting kind of overthrown. This play, the option, Decroft plays, D, he, Wesley has a touchdown, by the way, um, to square. Decroft puts a flat out here, probably a curl flat, it looks like, maybe a cloud. Um, man up, so it's kind of bracketing it. And then, whoo, that's tough with a halfback, Troll Davis. I wonder if Troll Davis, I don't know what his abil discounted abilities are. And then Wesley just saying, that's all day, baby. That's what I do. Love that. He has kind of a real, man, he has kind of like a goth look going. Like, so I'm being super dead, like, super serious. One, I don't get how these guys don't make their beds before this stuff. I really don't. Like, you can see his remote right here. You can see his remote. I don't like, so I wonder, the way his remote's, posi his remote's positioned, so he's a left-hander remote guy. Probably, like, chips. Left hand remote. Yeah, that's probably what it is. But I don't know, man. Like, make your pillows look nice, man. I don't know. What's in here? Can't really tell what's in there. I don't know. No desk lamp. No nothing here. I don't know. I have the same blinds. Probably an Austin thing. Like that he has them closed. Privacy is a big deal. I love privacy. And yeah, it just takes a simple. Oh, you can see that was left handed water sip, too. Definitely a left handed remote guy. Is, is he left handed? Is he? Look, 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 look. Right hand, take, right, yep, left hand or remote, look. Wesley's probably left-handed, or he does a lot of things with his left hand. Must He, he must. Huh, good for him. All right, well. <laughs> hand off, why not? Gonna, it's a good gap shoot, good gap shoot, good gap shoot. And I know, dude, Decroft's, uh, Decroft's such a nerd. Um, he's probably labbed all these things. You see, like, he gets his user, bumps him down just a step, and it's a perfect gap shoot through here. This tight end has to be the one to block him. Decroft dives early, has a big dude, right? Uh, Julius Peppers, 6'12", and is able to make that tackle for a loss of one. Now, you might be wondering why you're not seeing Quadfather in this game. All of the competitors, so to ban Quadfather, they had to have a unanimous 14-person vote 
that everybody says ban it. It was 13 to 1. Noah was the only person to say, no, I want to use Quad Father. So it's not banned, but right now, a lot of people, ha they, they have gentlemen's agreements to just not use him. They all think he's overpowered. None of Nobody wants to defend him. So everyone's like, no, no, no one wants to defend Quad Father, which is fair. Ooh, potential D-line pick right there. Always a potential D-line pick. Jeez, third and 11 for Wesley now. And you're going to see that double edge heat. And look, see, this is so weird. Is he going to press? Look at D-Cross user. Is he going to press Herman Moore? He just hasn't pressed him yet. Why is he standing? I, I really, I, I, is it a blitz thing? Nice ag. Nice, really, really nice. That, that's uh, very nice. When in doubt. Is that a blitz thing, I wonder? Yeah, I... Man, I gotta ask D. Croft. I, I really don't know. Because you could accomplish, in my mind, you could accomplish the same idea with the blitz if you just stood at the guard spot. I wonder if it's literally, like, if it's a gap shoot thing and he's doing it every single time. I'd like to see Wesley run the ball from that set and see if D. Croft shoots the gap on it pretty well or not. Uh, I'm curious. What a weird thing. D. Croft, by the way, if you haven't noticed, D. Croft is in dollar. Um, D. Croft in dollar. So to run dollar at a pretty high clip, you got to have good gap shoots. You have to, or else you're going to get the ball toted down your fucking throat. Someone's going to stuff their balls into your mouth if you don't have gap shoots in dollar. Wesley going right here. Yeah, and you can see, dude, D. Croft has... An, a, a, that's why I have to assume it, bro, because look at this gap shoot, bro. Like, this isn't fluke. Like, he goes into this defense, uh, probably better run defense overall. Uh, 3 d 5 wide, it is. And then, look, D. Croft pretty much stay, like moves his user just slightly, but as soon as the ball snapped, dude, look at this. He, like, cuts it. Watch this. Like, that's... And I know it's not fluke. I I'm very convinced it's not fluke. Um, just cause I, I know how... I, I know when uh, in Madden 20, me and D. Croft played all the time, and uh, the Madden 20 was the running game. And we spent probably 50, 60 hours labbing gap shoots over and over. All like We play four-hour games that would go into a billion overtimes just running the ball back and forth on each other. We had, we had some of the best run defense. Both lost to runners still, but had good run defense. <laughs> we did. Anyways, ooh, had that in route, bro. We've seen this route come become super popular in the red zone where it's, it's some sort of cross – slant whatever out of a trip set right from this uh from the number three wide receiver flat from number two and then in route from this guy and this in does a great job of getting a step on man coverage watch this in route right here watch this look gets inside leverage this in route is is throwable right here pressure got him though mark Brunel not able to get it off so he's gonna get a third and goal from the four and decroft from the four with how good his run defense is this puts wesley in a tough like it's hard to score right here man it's hard to score. A lot of people are probably like, a lot of people watch are probably like, man, Wesley needs to get under center. It's like, man, these the under center runs just aren't that powerful. I'd like, I'm surprised he doesn't have a gimmick run. Usually in this situation, if you can have like a gimmick run or two, you can have a pretty good shot. Does he ag him? No, he's going back to the same play. D Croft's got to get over to this. See, look, this time D Croft cross mans this in route, has a hook to help bracket it. So now he's not worried about it. If he wants to force that, he's going to test his luck with it. Great user. I mean, look, look at this. This is this is great defense, dude. And I'm meat riding right now, but I really do think it's great defense. Look what he does. This guy is going over here, right? We're going to have a hook curl from somebody. We're going to have a hook curl right here. And then as that in route gets into this area, d -Cross user is finally going to go get it. Right? Watch. Look, d has got the cross. Got the crosser in case it wins. Look, bagged. This in route's bagged right now. Bagged. Crosses the hook. User's going to bait it. Right, don't he could maybe if he timed it perfectly could throw it still right here. But look, user's going to bait it right there, and that's that, that's textbook red zone defense. I, I I am surprised though that Wesley doesn't have one a less predictable play because we've seen a lot of people running that now. I feel like uh, so a less predictable play, and then two, kind of just a gimmick run play, man. Like a lot of people seem to have gimmick run plays in this situation, um, and I know I I usually do. Um, so I'm surprised not to see it, and you see. Wes is going back, same idea, right? This, I mean, instead of a crosser, it's just a slant in route. This time he has a post going back across. I don't know how good this post is. We'll see. Oh, it, it runs pretty well. Yeah. Uh, the post is very good. The post is very good. You know, it's interesting. He has a bulletin board right here, but no bulletin board material. Huh. Decroft ball, 7-7, seven, seven, 32 seconds left in the half. Uh, we'll see Wesley get ball at half. So Wesley's in a pretty decent spot. 
and Decroft has zero timeouts right now. So, honestly, if Wesley can to stop, he's in a great spot. Wesley calls a timeout. These guys have wasted a lot of timeouts, by the way. I believe Decroft wasted a couple of timeouts early, which are kind of coming back right now because getting points on this drive, you go into half up and your opponent's getting ball, it's okay. But going tied, your opponent gets ball, not a great spot. And right there, he gets sacked, pressure right up the gut at him, and he might he might take this to half. I mean, there's not the, the ball. Uh, he'll, he'll probably he'll snap one more play, but I wouldn't be surprised if he just runs the ball and just says like whatever. After that, there's not much you can do. Just hope you kind of break one. Honestly, yeah, just runs the ball, and yeah, this is one of the things. I'll, I'll give another example, man, because I, I I've been paying more attention. I've been I guess caring more, um, just because I don't know. Look, like this example, like run blocking being really bad. Um, like this guy just targets nobody. Like he literally just targets, literally blocked. No, the, the pulling guard just blocked nobody on the run. Um, the block, the, the blocking logic's terrible. So beginning of half, Wesley ball, and you're going to see Wesley go into this route combo. We've seen one other time. Watch the, this actually, Decroft's user is kind of putting himself in a bad spot here because if he bails at all left, Wesley's going to snap throw this. Decroft has a couple times immediately shot over here though. So we'll see what happens here. And he does shoot over there a little bit. But then, look at that. See, that's an example of that, dude. And Decroft's upset about it. Uh, well, you can watch Decroft's reaction here. But this is, I mean, this is Wesley. This looks bagged, bro. But if you get good at these click-ons, bro, like, look at this. That's so good. Now, watch Decroft's reaction. He's upset about it. Because uh, it's a crazy throw. He probably hasn't even seen it, someone do that too often. But if you get good at it, I, I, like, it is, it is a high-level bro. It is. It is a high-level throw. It takes. I think it takes a good amount of skill. I can't cut it off like that. But if you practice it, dude, it can open up a lot of routes that aren't open, man. I think I see a lot of people. I've done it a lot of coaching sessions where I see a lot of people's biggest struggle is they'll run the correct plays, but they don't know how to throw the ball. And what I mean is like they don't know how to throw and catch the ball. So they they are pass leading incorrectly. Uh, they're not high balling when they should be high balling. Um, or they don't know how to click on an, an ag catch routes like you see Wesley doing. That route would not be open for a lot of people, but for Wesley it was, um, and that's for that reason. Man, I want to see a run play just to see if Decroft can shoot that gap. Underneath, good tackle, low hit stick helps guarantee a, be uh, a really good chance of a tackle. Unlikely that you, you get that broken, especially from someone whoever – was that Cam Chancel? No, it was Antonio Camardi. Oh, all right. I also just saw the number 30-something and saw, uh, saw the Seahawks uniform, so – Whatever. Blocking that tight end. That's really Wesley's main way of picking up the slot corner blitz is this block tight end. But the slot corner on the right side seems to be attacking a pretty high clip. I, yeah, this is a bait. We've seen this route combo a lot in a previous man's and in this one. All of these routes right here can get open against man coverage. Streak is just pushing any deep zones out. It's really, if Decroft has a deep zone, this streak makes a lot of sense. If Decroft has a flat, though, You'd really want this guy on like an out or a flat, pushing the flat to the sidelines. Let's see. Decroft, nothing over there. Cross, man. And good defense. Good defense from uh, from Decroft. Wesley on a fourth and 10, not going to punt. This is a huge opportunity for Wesley. And now Decroft, too, on fourth down, where one of them could take kind of control of the game. Wesley gets a first down. He's almost in field goal range. Decroft gets a stop. He's already in field goal range. To take the, he should take the lead. He's got motion out wide. We have not seen this motion out wide yet. This is pretty common in tight slots, but Wesley has not done this yet. And he's actually going with a little bit of unorthodox route combo. Usually you'd see something along the lines of out route, corner route, streak, basically creating a flood on the side, and then this, right? But instead, Wesley's going to pick up the slot corner blitz, and then he's going to go smart route and out route, which can beat man and then slant. And I know there's a lot of drawings here, boys, but you guys are staying with me. We have a lot of – you guys are all smart, very educated, well-tuned viewers. Throws it in a double coverage. He had no choice because he had pressure. Did he have the streak, though, is the thing. Let's watch Herman Moore on the right. He may have – they may have bumped – they did bump, actually. But you – see, that's the thing. No, no, no. I'm going to actually – I'm, I'm going to defend Wesley here. Let's, uh, let's delete these uh, – this stuff really fast. And I'm going to defend Wesley here because – look at this. He actually, I think he actually reads this pretty well. Look, um, this guy's coming. So you have a one-on-one, -on -one, right? This is uh, man on man, right? So if it's just straight man to man, you throw the corner. The corner route's open. And Wesley's proven he could throw the corner out in contested coverage. He can click on and catch it. He's actually very high level at this. Um, we've seen that, right? You following? This is, this is straight man to man, right? 
this guy's on him, this guy's on him. But watch. Watch what happens. The corner route, when he cuts, he takes the other man. Like, this guy's not manned up to the corner route. This guy's manned up onto the streak. But Wesley has no idea. This is my issue with bumping. Wesley has no idea if they're going to bump or not. So he's seeing one-on-one -on -one man coverage across the board on that right side. He's throwing the corner out because it's one-on-one. -on -one. The corner out's going to win. He's going to catch it, get the first down. When it, but because they bump, which is extremely inconsistent and just Mickey Mouse AF, he actually gets back. Look, he, he, this is, Revis is the man on the corner route. This guy is manned up onto the streak. Honestly, Wesley, Wesley, got, Wesley got effed right here. It, it's part of the game. But this, he actually got screwed, and that's something that's gonna that it's little it's little stuff like this that makes me hate how the game's played right now and hate the man coverage meta, especially the way the man coverage meta is, because this will go super unnoticed in the midst of a game because it looks like oh man Wesley just missed his streak wide open, the streak should not have been open, the streak was manned up, the corner out was open, he made the right read, it just got bumped, and it's and he has there's no way of knowing it got bumped. And you can't even make the argument that, oh, well, you got to wait for it after it cuts because these routes against man coverage are only open as they cut and for a split second after the cut. If you wait too long, it's no longer open. So you have to throw on the cut and assume that they won't bump because routes shouldn't bump in the game. Uh, that's not how they should do. And again, we'll watch this in full speed right now uh, just for you guys to see. I'll, I'll get rid of the drawing again. I want you guys to actually be able to see this. Okay, I think this is really important, and it, and it just goes overlooked. It's just... It, to me, it's frustrating because now what, uh, Wesley is cheated out of a, uh, of a drive now because he picked up this fourth down. He did. He really did. Like, you can see it. it, it you watch it back plenty of times. You can see Ronnie Lott. And Decoff was excited, but honestly, Decoff didn't get a stop right there. It, Wesley got screwed. Now, whether or not Wesley would have caught it, I, I have to assume he would have. He should have. Um, yeah, I, I hate that. I, I really hate that because that now now we're getting to the fluke part of the game where it's like, I don't know, I don't know. Now now Wesley's been screwed. He like he really has been. Let's see. Yeah, notice. Yeah, he's out. Good run. Uh, notice. Remember that one time when Wesley shot the gap on the backside with with Ted Hendricks coming from the other way when he was blitzing. Notice what's what happens here when he's not blitzing, and. And look, he backpedals just a step, just a little step, which means he's not coming through that gap as fast. And we have a huge, huge, I mean, uh, yeah, good user. Click, like, ah. Uh, he's trying to stay away from the user, but you got to cut that all the way up. This guy needs to hold that block, too. Kind of, honestly, hindsight, but kind of bad run stick by Decroft right there, truthfully. It can be kind of hard to tell in the moment, though, for sure. We'll see. He's going to the C-Route. He's only ran the C-Route a couple of times. It's kind of a good quick snap play. He has it. Throws it. High ball. Boom. One out, he's red one-on-one -on -one man coverage on the left side. What has... I haven't been noticing well enough what Wesley's been doing with this guy. I've seen a little... I feel like I've seen a little bit of cross man. I haven't been noticing quite enough, though. And the quick snap makes sure that there's no help over there. C-Route's going to cook. And, yeah, good, good dot. Wesley running a little bench concept to the right again. I mean, how many plays have we seen on a bunch? Have we seen any? Oof. Wesley's what Wesley? I mean, probably his first bad read of the game, I think. And it it was bad though. User dude, like if you make this throw, man, look where the user is. like he he just it's he's doing it's got to get picked off, bro. If you make the mistake and throw it within a yard, th within three feet of the user. Seriously, within a yard of the user, it's got, like, so, I don't care. And and he tried, like, he's going back, like, he just can't react to it. The game doesn't let you react. I promise you, D-Cross played 10,000 games of Madden 23. One of the best players in the world. He is doing, like, the correct things to go to lurk this. It just doesn't let you. And not only that, I guarantee you d hit Y. Guy doesn't animate with the Y animation at all. Um, Wesley gets away with one right there. But yeah, have we seen an actual play from Bunch yet? Or is he just coming out on Bunch every single time audibly in tight slots? That's what I believe he's doing. It, it is cool, though. You, you see a, a good amount of different route combos. Yeah, click on ag. Like from Wesley running tight slots to uh, Henry running tight slots. You'll see some different ones. Um, but also, uh, Decroft running a little bit of a different defense than what we've seen. Uh, what I feel like we've seen against in some of Henry's game. I guess I'm really thinking about the Henry versus Cole game. I can really distinctively think about a lot of those route combos. 
and we're going to see. Yeah, post slant. Uh, yeah, Henry did not. I feel like Henry did not run much post slant. He really isolated one side of the field. Uh, is what it, is what it really felt like. Here we go. This is kind of similar. He's just blocking his tight end a lot and utilize. Yeah, yeah. Just a lot of crossing over the middle, trying to beat the man coverage. Corner out, got it wide open. You know, I'm gonna be 100 percent honest with you guys. I I think D cross played great. I really do. But it'd be ill advised of me to say that Henry might not might be getting a little a little. I'm not going to say it for ad revenue purposes, but I think Wesley might be getting a little screwed. Um, all right. All right. I will say I've been, I've been watching what a Wesley play in these tournaments for three, four, five years now, maybe. And, uh, for, his nickname is Wesley getting lucky. Um, and he's out right there. So it ends up working out. His nickname is Wesley getting lucky. Um, and I believe all things work out. And so he's it's finally coming around where he's getting a little screwed. Ends up scoring that drive anyways. 14-14 ball game. Let's see what we got here, boys. Motion. Yeah. I mean, again, like, I'm such a big believer in it, dude. You don't need that many plays. I I, I honestly really love the fact that D-Cross sitting in a formation. He's not – a lot of people, like, man, I, I really love the fact that D-Cross sitting in a formation, man. I, I really do. Sitting in a formation – what is the defense doing? How can I attack that defense? A lot of people have kind of adapted to the way of come out in a formation, audible to another formation, and try to snap the ball as fast as possible so the defense defense can't get set up. And I hate that style of man. I love the sitting in a formation. What is the defense doing? How can I attack that? And I'm going to run these plays to attack that style of defense. I really do. I think it's a much better way of playing. Um, it's much more pure way of playing, uh, in my humble opinion. And Decroft doing a great job of that. Let's see. Slot corner. Is that slot corner going to come? Because right now we have Blitzer. Blitzer. Slot corner is not coming anymore. Okay. Nope. Okay. Probably just a loop right here on the right side. Decroft doing a pretty good job picking up the loop, but we're seeing a lot of pressure up the interior from Aaron Donald, the nose tackle right now. And again, so that's where I'm always such a huge advocate of this is like, if you're Wesley, this is where you want Decroft to have to attack you is rushing up the middle because all you need is look how close this is to him getting tackled right here and a, like easy fumble changes the game. It's great pocket, but at the same time, it's so scary. And anybody who scrambles up the middle like that knows what I'm talking about. Like it, it gets so scary and it's frustrating as a defender because you know that, I mean, if uh, your shed happens you know, three tenths of a second faster, you make that tackle, and there's a good chance that that guy fumbles, and you get the ball, and then it's a whole different ball game, right? Um, so good job by Decroft stepping out of the pocket and taking off. That move right there was really good in Madden 20 when there was the LT feature. We're gonna see a run right here. Uh, the LT feature let you actually, you know, become uh, a ball carrier, and you'd be able to take off up the middle fast. Whereas, it, but it's just not in the game anymore. And this time, it's actually gonna be one of the first big runs we've seen broken off. We're gonna see how do they block that up front? How the boys? How the boys block it? Let's see. This actually, I really, I mean, just, just isn't how it's supposed to get blocked. Good job, EA. Just can't be. I with this guy in, it's a little bit weird. But even if you, even if you kicked, which you wouldn't have to, kick down, down, boom, kick out. But this, I mean, look at this. No, no, you actually want to see something that's stupid, dude? No, no, check this out. Check this guy. Look at what Ted Hendricks does. This is, what, this is also just like the game being bad. Like, this is overall just the game being terrible. Watch. Ted Hendricks just runs directly, <laughs> directly into the center. The center blocked two people. Just runs directly into him. The, the, the run blocking, the targeting is so wrong. And then this guy actually is like a JV linebacker. Nice. Good job. Really nice. That's why you see inconsistencies in the run game, too, because these guys just randomly randomly just run into each other. Wesley, well, so I didn't realize, dude. Okay, first of all, look at the difference here. Uh, highest earning MCS players, Henry661. Uh, Drini, mind you, Drini hasn't made that much money in the past two years, I don't believe, and he's still second. It shows how much he won early on um, or, like, you know, a year, you know, two or three years ago. Uh, Wesley, number three, though chance to make even more in this one only seven thousand away from dreamy it's a lot of money bro they have made a lot of money right now we have the defensive play art which is actually the broadcast team tries not to show defensive play art so they haven't messed up right here and you can see actually what um 
what Wesley's doing with this. He's cra it appears he's crashing out. And get that loop. We're going to see off that side. This time, that backside backer actually comes down, makes that tackle. And Trell Davis has nine rushes for 51. And we're at a second and five right now for Decroft. Who's this middle backer for Wesley Knight? I don't know who that is. Uh, uh, popular route combo, or not popular, but um, we've seen it a few times now. Has that corner route, throws it. Cheetah now going to get out to Wesley. Gets a little bit bad of a watch. Watch how the DB kind of reacts to uh, Cheetah catching this. Kind of takes a bad, like, bad angle down. And Cheetah's able to get out. Touchdown. All right, Wesley got answer. Second and nine for Wesley. Going to be snapping that rock. Corner out. This is one of the dangers with this kind of like click on swerve type thing that Wesley's been doing is that if you get it wrong, you can kind of knock yourself out of animating. You see right here, watch, watch really closely what Kittle does. But if you see that little swerve down, and I'm going to replay it for you guys because it is important because if you mess it up, you can get yourself out of position and you can cost yourself what probably should have just been an easy completion to the outside. Swerves down, tries to ag it, doesn't get it correct. Um, whether it's just, you know, maybe a millisecond of, of a mistake, whether he got maybe even cheated by something that's very inconsistent of that not happening. But regardless, I've seen that plenty of times in the game, actually. Um, and it seems like actually it happens a ton with tight ends, um, being super truthful. The, I mean, yeah, Decroft's a little bit like, oh, geez, but like it won't ever really get picked. Look, the read is on these Texas routes, even from the halfback, right? User bails, throw the, throw the Texas, right? User bails, throw the Texas. Even right there where they kind of bump, if they don't, bump, it easily could have been completed. Very almost never is that picked. Almost never is that picked. That's probably what Wesley's thinking right now too. Is like the fact that they even bump like that. It's like, geez, dude, come on. I gotta assume that's what he's thinking. Fourth and nine. They'll probably go. Is he going post slant wheel? No post slant option. All right, let's see. Has it? Click on ag. Yep. Yeah. I mean, he's just running, again, just playing man coverage, so you, you know you only need two man-beating routes. The user has to choose one of them and just make the throw to the other. Yeah, good, good dot in fourth and nine. Good play call, too. Something that shouldn't be super inconsistent. Some of the corner routes can be, can be inconsistent, especially the way he's quick on agging. But right there, like, that's a route combo that should pretty consistently get open and avoid a lot of, like, the bumping issues. All right, he's running the ball. Are we going to see a gap shoot? Yup. Think, okay. I'm just curious for the sole purpose of like what D Cross been doing with his user. Look, it looks like watch these, watch this, boom, boom. It looks like there's a gap shoot right here. It looks like that's why he's been doing it. But this guy chips off last second. I feel like that's inconsistent. I actually think that's what makes sense to me. Um, I think that's an actual gap shoot that's pretty consistent for D Cross. I bet he messed something like a barely up to have that happen, or that guy just chipped off randomly. I, I I'm willing to bet money that, that, that that's what it is. Um, and there's a chance I lose my money on that bet, but that's what it looked like. Four verts he's audible into. We have not seen four verts yet. Four verts at the post. Running back streak. Okay. Quick throw, wheel, and he gets a broken tackle from George Kittle. Falls down. He's playing the clock game. Okay. Wesley being smart. Basically playing for overtime at this point. Get seven. No time left. Force OT. Assumingly, he doesn't go for two. Um, Wesley, I doubt he would, especially with how much issues had in the red zone prior in this game. Um, not showing any decent run plays. All of his pass plays were pretty much bagged. Um, got, you know, got really fortunate to actually be able to score. Yeah, inside zone, killing the clock all the way down to the two-minute warning. Decroft does have three timeouts, so he can work the clock a little bit. He has, you know, some games he can play at the clock as well to try to give himself a money drive, basically. But he's in a good spot. You know, when you're in this spot in defense, you're in an okay spot, like, mentally. Like, it's scary when you're like up four in this case, but up seven, it's like, okay, probably worst case scenario is he ties the game, um, which is like, okay, you know, tie the game. You haven't lost yet, but we'll see. Another first down, no timeouts from either of them. Wesley's going to hold on to him. Decroft, though, uh, could be using him at any point, probably inside zone right here. Let's see how good Decroft's gap shoot is on this. I mean, you, you can tell, dude, the gap shoots are, he, 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 the, the gap shoots are perfect pretty much. Always, oh, his user is pretty much always the one making the tackle, which and that that can be rare when you're watching people play dollar. Right there though, ooh, doesn't get it, and Wesley gets a big run. Does Decroft call timeout? He does. Okay, that's one time. Sometimes with those user gap shoots, though, if you mess them up, 
You're going to give up a big run, though. That's what can be kind of scary with, with relying on that. You see, let's see if he gets it right here. Shoots it. No, wrong again. I wonder if is, – is, is Wesley IDing somebody, I wonder? There's a chance he is. Because when you can do little things to mess up gap shoots, like motioning, IDing, sliding, double teaming, those are all things that can inc inconsistently mess up gap shoots. There's a uh, – yeah, another inside, uh, another inside zone all the way down. There's uh, some EA devs will say that, like, IDing and double team doesn't make a difference on run plays. That's, that's wrong. Like, it, I've literally tested it, like, recently. I tested the beginning of the year. I've tested other Maddens. Me and other Madden players have tested it. It's always been wrong. Um, double teaming and IDing definitely can change things. But it can make it inconsistent. And it can also make things worse. Uh, but it definitely, you can get different results by doing that. I've, I, I've a thousand percent seen it. Every Madden I've played, every time I've tested it, always just came back uh, with that answer. Wesley, though, going, it's single back wing tight. I wonder how familiar he is with this because he didn't run that at all earlier. Is he passing? Is it now he's going audible into halfback inside? You got three plays, you get into the end zone. Probably three runs. Halfback inside, cuts it back. Touchdown. Good. And I do know that he's just going to kick this extra point. So we're going to see Decroft have the ball. 21 21, 10 seconds. You just, just take a shot, I guess. You don't have it. He doesn't have any timeouts either. Take a shot. I mean, he's at the 25 probably right here. So, I mean, you can kick from like the 43. Oh, he's at the 20. Man, he needs 35 yards basically to get into field goal range. Has a one-on-one. -on -one. Actually, that's risky defense, dude. One-on-one, -on -one, leave, leaving this one-on-one. -on -one, like, he has this fade route that we've seen from uh, from U trips before. And this, look at this free form. You can see the arrow. Look at this. If he gets a – like, there's a chance he – you could get that rack innovation and get tackled out of bounds there. Jeez. So close, but good D. Yeah, overtime, and we're going to see Decroft get the ball first. Second and nine to begin overtime for Decroft. We're going to see that motion from outside wide receiver all the way across. Probably going to be slant post. Yep, seen this combo a plenty of times now. Let's see. No, not there. Corner out. Got it. And an ag catch there. Touches him down. Who? Mark Brunel, 10 for 12, 159, three tutties. I wonder how many sacks he's had. Has he gotten sacked three times? Two or three times, I think, at least. At least. Going to that curl flat play, we saw we saw previously he called this one other time, and, oh, he's motioning across. Okay. I, I, yeah, I don't like it. He calls a timeout. I, I actually hate that. If he was going to motion snap that, 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 that corner route just takes so long. Because now in this game, in previous Madden's motion snapping, you would snap it and they would take off into the route. Now they stutter step and then get into the route, and it's like an extra second for that route to break now. It's just not great. I, let's see it. Let's see it. Um, He actually had plenty of time. Did he have a touchdown? Oh, he did. He missed it. He missed it. Oh, man. How did he have it? Oh, super blown coverage. Yeah, he just totally missed it, dude. Jeez. I mean, really? Oh, man, that's tough. Just totally missed it. I guess he's thinking, like, right here he's looking at this and thinking this guy's backing up, thinking this guy is just backing up. So he takes his eyes off that, says, this is bagged. Let me look to the left now. Nothing there. I've stepped up already. Let me just fall down. And then as he's falling down, you can see his look. You can literally see his reaction. Yeah, he just miss. He just misses it. And sometimes, dude, it just like you have your process of going through things, and sometimes you just miss it, man. Ah, oh, man, that that's that's tough though, dude. That's tough. You just don't expect that blown coverage to be in that, like for Wesley to blow that coverage either. It's like kind of shot, like you know what I mean. The streak was wasn't open off the snap. It didn't look like deep would be open, so you just take your eyes off of it. And now he's going right back to the same idea just to see, does he blow the coverage again? Wesley does not. And now he, he could have gotten intentional grounding on that play too. That could have, This could be third and 20-something. Jeez. Jeez. He actually, funny enough, with the this user was on the tight end. He could have highballed the, the tight end, like pass the outside, and clicked on Agda and probably would have caught it as well. So he missed a couple of things that he could have thrown on that play. And I think the corner out one too, low-key, but... Oh, I won't nitpick it too much. Uh, third and 10. Loop. Boom, boom, boom. This is what we're sending. 
Uh, let's see where he goes. Motions across. We gotta keep that. Okay, slant. Yep. Timeout. All right. Love the timeout call that time from Wesley. I believe that was Wesley. Should be right. We're gonna see. Probably D crop. Probably can go back to the same route combo. I mean, I, the route combo is good. I'm a big fan of the route combo. D crop. Yep. Setting it up right now. No audible. He makes an audible. Going to scat now. Go to the play scat. My guess is corner route streak post. Is he gonna post this guy? Let's see. The time now. Timeout. Sick, dude. Really making the analysis really, really good. Thanks, guys. Keep calling the timeouts. Hey, Wesley, make sure you get another one, dude. Are you sure? You like it, dude? You like that defense? Yeah, you sure? You call, go off sides or something, dude. Why not? Why not? Just keep delaying this. Let's have fire all day, dude. I know better to do. Motions across now. Okay. And we're going back to what? I Was that the original route combo? I believe so. Anyways. Had that corner route, throws it kind of late. I will say, d -Cross thrown the corner routes a little bit late, and he's they've still been open, but he has thrown them a little bit late a couple of times I, I've seen. Like, right there, he could have thrown that a split second sooner and give himself a higher percentage chance if it was more bagged, but it's still wide open. I got to assume it's going to be, is he running the ball right here? Nope, going to go scat again. Again, this is Patriots playbook, boys. d -Cross going back to the same route combo. Um, I ran you trips. If you watch a, a video, uh, it's titled uh, "How I Beat Young Kiv." I ran you trips in a tournament um, earlier this year. I like you trips. Um, I've always been I've always been a decent fan of you trips. I didn't know how good it was anymore in this year, and I'm still not sure. I don't I, I don't know because like just because the thing is like just because one person runs an offense at a high level like Decroft is doing doesn't necessarily mean that like that's the best offense. You know what I mean? Um, and I do wonder, like, uh, I mean, he's playing, the, he's, he's moving the ball very well. Um, so it's, it's clearly the best offense for him. Up top, Christian Kirk, great free form, free form completion, it says two. Look at this. Boom, gets a one on one. Christian Kirk gonna get a step. And look at the free form, dude. If you mess this free form up, you can overthrow it, or you can get kind of a bad animation. That's the perfect rack animation, dude. Touchdown. Nice. Just needs to get a stop now. This is interesting for Wesley because now if he scores a touchdown, and it kicks an extra point. Next score wins, and Decroft has the ball. So you might even see Wesley go for two if he scores here. First and ten. Ha haven't ran this route combo since I believe the first play of the game. High balls it. Picked off Ryan Dawkins. I'll be honest. I don't know what he saw. Really, this is probably like this like his second like really bad read. I I don't know what he saw here. I really don't. This it, maybe if this guy maybe if this. Dude was like 6'4", like if this was Dickerson or something. But even this guy looks tall. Ryan Dawkins, like 6'2", I think. I don't know what he saw. It wasn't like great defense. You know what I mean? It wasn't like, oh, bat. Like, it, it was just, I don't know. D. Croft forgets to run out of bounds, runs out of bounds. And D. Croft's moving on. He's going to California for the first live event from the EA Madden MCS Championship Series from Electronic Arts Gaming. It's in the game uh, in like two years or something. So congrats to D. Croft.